Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel where today we're going to do a little experiment that you will participate in. I recently saw a meme online and it was one of those that slid past my feed real quickly, but I saw enough of it to see that it had a bunch of little drawings of hands holding pencils. And the question was, which grip is yours? And, you know, it's all fine and dandy to weigh in on which grip is the most common one people use, but it also had little names underneath of them. And like, I wanted to know what the names were and it's been bugging me. So I did a little research. I'm going to show you the grips that I found. There's a lot more of them that didn't have pictures. They had descriptions of like people doing really awkward, weird things. So I didn't put those in this video, but I am going to do a drawing because as I was doing this, I realized each one of these grips, I think I do at different points in a drawing. So I did a drawing and filmed it just to see how many times my hand position changed and you get to be the counters. So you can leave your count or your guess at how many times it was in the comment section after the video. So be ready with your little clicker and start counting. And let's get started. Most of the resources I found were for parents and teachers trying to teach their child how to hold a pencil to write with. And they teach one particular one, which is one I think I use quite a bit. And I thought this was interesting. Pretend you're picking up pieces of rice with your two fingers, then grab the pencil and flip it around and you'll be in the dynamic tripod, which is the one they say you should have for writing. Two fingers on the pencil, one underneath supporting the pencil. Then you can also do the extended dynamic tripod. And that one is just holding it back further. I use that a ton I also use that with my long point pencils when I'm drawing and it's very helpful to get my hand out of the way so I can see what I'm drawing instead of having my fingers all cramped up there. But I also do weird pinky things and I didn't find any names for the weird pinky things. Sometimes my hand is splayed out, sometimes it's tucked under, kind of depends on what I feel like doing at the moment, I guess. There's a dynamic quadrupod also, and this is when four fingers are touching the pencil, and then your pinky finger is the only one that can, I guess, free range roam like mine does. And I don't find that I use this all that much. Putting that fourth finger on there seems like a lot. Lateral tripod, again, I don't do it a ton, but the lateral is the thumb that goes across, and you still have three fingers, though, touching the pencil and guiding it, and those other two just hanging out. You can also do a lateral quadrupod, so four fingers supporting that pencil, and only the pinky is out there moving around. So there's another one. There's also underhanded. Underhanded and overhanded get dissed by these websites because they say, oh, you can't do anything with those because they're teaching handwriting. But for artists, underhanded and overhanded can get you really sketchy lines, and I use them a lot for that. You can also use heavy overhanded because anytime you're using the side of the pencil, you can get all that lead on the paper and you can press down on it in a heavy way to get more coverage and, and darker marks. You can use a brush grip, which is basically holding your pencil like it's a paintbrush and get much looser marks and more expressive marks. And I guess you can also combine different ones of the finger combinations and do all kinds of different stuff. I saw lots of them being dissed and people making jokes about different ways people hold pencils, but really use what works because as long as it's making the marks that you need and giving you the control or lack of control that you want, use whatever works because I use a lot of different ones. And that's what I wanted to test in shooting a video of myself making a drawing. So you might think, gee whiz, Sandy, you are always filming yourself drawing and painting. Why are you filming yourself worried about your hand position? Well, because I never look at my hand position. I have been in the last you know, week or two more conscious of it while I've been working on anything. Just where is my hand? What are my fingers doing? And those, those two stray fingers, my ring finger and my pinky finger, are driving me nuts because I can't figure out why sometimes I tuck them under. Sometimes I splay them out. I just do all different kinds of things with them. 
and there doesn't seem to be a real rhyme or reason. At first, mentally, I thought, well, maybe I was getting my fingers out of the way so they wouldn't splooge the graphite or, you know, whatever I was drawing with on the paper and smoosh it around. And that doesn't seem to have any correlation. And here I'm not using any graphite underneath of where my hand is at all. And yet I'm still doing weird things. Like right now my pinky is splayed way out. Why is that? I don't know. Is it giving more stability to my hand? Maybe. Is it giving me a little more control? Possibly. I don't know. I'm not, I haven't assessed it well enough to know. Just enough to really be irritatedly interested in this whole idea. <laughs> Hopefully I haven't ruined drawing for you so that you won't be thinking only about your hand position while you're drawing or writing next time. But I tend to use mostly the, um, the tripod. That's just my, my go-to position for most everything. Uh, sometimes the extended tripod, holding it back further. And then I use the overhand. And here I was using it because I was looking to get a nice long line. And I was using my elbow as the fulcrum point. If you're trying to get a strong, like straight line and you use your wrist as the fulcrum, fulcrum point and nothing else in your arm is moving, you're going to end up getting an arc. You'll never get a straight line that way. So if you move your, your whole forearm together as one unit, then you're more likely to get a straight line. And if you really need a longer straight line, go from your shoulder. Let the whole arm move together. So some of these different types of positions for the hand give you looser marks. And so when I first started out, I was using much looser marks to get the basic sketch of the hand in there. And then anytime I use any shading, I'm using the side of the pencil just because I want more access to that lead. I want more softness in the lead. And then using the blending stump along with it, I'm using the same kind of hand positions, typically overhand when I'm using the blending stump just because that, that seems to be what works best for getting the side of that blending stump to give coverage to the paper. But any time I was doing shading, it seemed to almost always switch to the overhand, at least most of the time, so that I get more of the pencil on the paper. And when I went back to drawing detail, I would go back to the tripod. But it goes back and forth so quickly, even when I was watching this at real time, I was not able to even keep track of and count how many times my hand position changed. So maybe you in the comments will be able to do that. I don't really know, but it was a fun drawing anyway. I don't usually do hands. Hands are difficult for me, but at least it looks like a hand and that's something. Now it's your turn to weigh in on how many times you think I changed my hand position during that drawing. And I also would like you to share this with somebody who also has weird art thoughts in their brains because I need to share this weird brain with more people who get me. I will see you again in my next video. Make sure you subscribed if you have not yet already, and I will see you later. Go create something every day. Bye-bye.